This is 3 News Daily. Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Daily on this Monday, January 23rd. I'm Stephanie Haney, here with your top stories. And we start in California where the investigation continues into a shooting in Monterey Park after a gunman opened fire in a dance hall after a Lunar New Year celebration on Saturday. Ten people were killed and several others were wounded. The gunman was later found dead in his van from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This shooting has shaken Asian American communities across the nation and here in Northeast Ohio. Lydia Aspara spoke with people here about how they're feeling. With the sound of the drums, you knew there would be a grand entrance for the king of the Lunar New Year. The more that we spread our cultures and share each other's cultures, the more we're more acceptable. It's becoming more acceptable if you take inventory of the crowd. But something or someone went wrong in Los Angeles when a gunman opened fire near that lunar celebration, killing 10. And here, partygoers are aware. Johnny Wu is with the OCA advocate Greater Cleveland. I was very shocked and saddened that, that this happened there uh, in, in L.A. Wu at first thought the shooting was a hate crime. Asian American citizens are getting, getting hurt by people. He's now trying to figure out why. Very unfortunate this is happening, picking up a, a Lunar New Year celebration that we all having to get together for Year of the Rabbit, have a great time, uh, learn, uh, respecting each other. So far, there has been no connection to the shooting or whether it had anything to do with the Lunar New Year. Wu says any shooting, any time of the year can affect our day-to-day -day lives. Don't have, make, have this incident uh, prompt your, your decide to go and celebrate with everybody else together. I'm very sure there will be more security involved. More police will be out there to, to, for everybody safe. Lydia Spara, 3 News. Thank you for that, Lydia, and we're certainly thinking of those families and the loved ones of the people who were lost in that incident. Now here at home in Florence Township, we are learning that one person and two dogs died in a house fire early Sunday morning. When firefighters got to the house on State Route 113, it was engulfed in flames and smoke was pouring out. Firefighters found one person inside and pulled them out, and that person was taken to Mercy Health in Lorraine and later died. Two other people were taken to hospitals for smoke inhalation. We don't know yet how they're doing. Two dogs were found dead inside the home and seven other dogs were rescued. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And in Geauga County, the Thompson Fire Department is mourning the loss of one of its own. Firefighter Joshua Fanti passed away unexpectedly yesterday morning. We don't know the cause of the death. He was a former U.S. Marine and had been with the fire department for almost four years. The fire department told us that they'll share his funeral arrangements when they make them. And the parents of Stone Foltz have reached a record $2.9 million settlement with Bowling Green State University for his hazing death in 2021. In a joint statement, both Bowling Green and the Foltz family said Stone's death will be an important part of anti-hazing efforts in the future. The Foltz family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the school in June of 2022, claiming the school was responsible for Stone's death on March 7th, 2021. He was at an off-campus fraternity house for an event where he drank so much that he died by alcohol poisoning. We have more details on the settlement on WKYC.com. Now, over the weekend on Saturday, the Cleveland community came together to hold a vigil and remember the lives of four family members shot and killed in a domestic violence attack on the west side. A Cleveland grand jury today indicted 41-year-old Martin Muniz on several charges, including four counts of aggravated murder. Police say he shot five people at a home on Mack Court. That fifth victim, 8-year-old Iana, was severely injured. 3 News spoke with Gloria Hernandez, a friend of the family members who died. She says family and friends will continue to fight for justice as Muniz sits in jail after confessing to the shooting. Hernandez also gave us an update on how Iana is doing. She's doing good. She's great. She's, um, she's, she's, doing, she's doing a whole lot better. Um, she, she, it's it's going to be some time. That's certainly understandable. And we are told that Iana is a big fan of TikTok and she was at least feeling well enough to do some dancing on Saturday. 
we're thinking of her and we're thinking of the family and those loved ones involved in that. Now to Macedonia, where a man was taken to the hospital after an officer-involved shooting. It happened around 7 o'clock last night in a shopping center on East Aurora Road. Police responded to the Burlington Coat Factory for a theft report, and then when they tried to arrest the suspect, he struggled, and one officer fired his gun. We're told no officers were hurt in the shooting. We'll continue to update you as we learn more about the person who was taken to the hospital. And FBI officials in Atlanta and Cleveland say vandalism and an Atlanta church might have involved someone with ties to central or northern Ohio. This was on Sunday, July 3rd, 2022. It was days after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. A group of 10 people were seen on video vandalizing the outside of the Ebenezer Baptist Church Heritage Sanctuary. FBI officials say at least one person or several from the group sprayed the following words on the side of the church. If abortions aren't safe, neither are you. The group was dressed in all black, and we have photos from a surveillance camera on WKYC.com. There's a $10,000 reward being offered for any information leading to the identification, arrest, and conviction of the suspects responsible for the crime. Anyone with information is asked to call 1-800-CALL-FBI or send tips online to tips.fbi.gov, and people who send in tips are able to remain anonymous. Now back here at home, opening statements began today in the federal racketeering and conspiracy trial of former Ohio House Speaker Larry Householder and lobbyist Matt Borges. This is possibly the biggest corruption scandal in state history. Centered around a $61 million bribery scheme to bail out nuclear power plants that were owned by First Energy in 2019. Investigators say Householder used some of that money to settle a personal lawsuit, pay for a home in Florida, and pay off credit card debt. The trial is expected to last about six weeks. Now, I'll be covering the case as it happens, starting today at 4 p.m. on What's New, and then again on 3 News at 6 p.m. And later this week, I'll have a Legally Speaking special for you to bring you all up to speed on the allegations, including what First Energy has already admitted to in this case. All right, now let's talk gas prices, because Gas Buddy says both Akron and Cleveland are now above the national average. Akron drivers are seeing an average of $3.49 per gallon. That's a more than 15 cent increase within the past week. In Cleveland, gas prices have climbed over 9 cents, bringing the city's average to $3.47 per gallon. Northeast Ohio prices are nearly 10 cents higher than the national average, and that national average is $3.39 per gallon. And before we go, we have an announcement from Edwin's founder, Brandon Krostowski. The chef is known for giving second chances at his French fine dining eatery in Cleveland where he hires people who have recently gotten out of incarceration. But in Europe, he's known for feeding refugees. This past April, he volunteered with World Central Kitchen Workers in Poland about five miles from the Ukrainian border to cook for refugees fleeing the war. And this time around, Krastowski is traveling to Kyiv to cook for those in need. Our own Isabel Lawrence will have the full story on that this evening. We love to see Clevelanders doing incredible things here and around the world, and he's definitely one of them doing just that. Thanks for being with us here on today's edition of 3 News Daily. We'll see you back here tomorrow with more of your top stories that everyone is paying attention to here in Northeast Ohio.